Hey everybody, this is Pippin. Uh, what I want to show you in this video is not so much a tutorial, but more a walkthrough of the methods that I use to create the settings system for easy digital downloads. And there's a couple of reasons why I want to show you this. You've probably all seen settings pages and plugins and how to create settings pages. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different tutorials and a whole bunch of different methods, uh, some that are better than others, some that are way worse than others. But anyway, I want to show you this system that I built because I think it's really kind of cool um, and I think it works really well. One of the things that I kept in mind when building it and one of the, reason, the primary reason why I built it the way I did was keeping the idea of modularity and extensibility in mind. I wanted to be able to have add-on plugins uh, have the option to attach their own custom settings to the Easy Digital Downloads settings page without having to go through any crazy process, jump through a bunch of hoops in order to get the settings registered and loaded. I also did not want to require that add-on plugins create their own separate settings page. I wanted to build a simple API that they could just hook into really easily to register their settings. So the settings page that I'm talking about is under Downloads and Settings. And here we have a very standard WordPress settings page where we have our each of our settings, their, their name, the HTML field, whatever it is. Uh, we have our tabs across the top, and the entire system is completely modular in that anybody who wants to, through a custom add-on plugin, can actually attach extra settings to any one of these tabs. A perfect example is the payment gateways. So each of these options here, for example, the check payment settings, PayPal Pro, PayPal Express, and the sample gateway settings, all of these are registered through add-ons add-on plugins with one single function um, and that's one of the things that was really important for me was building a system that was really simple for other developers to integrate with um, so I want to kind of walk you through some of the code on how we do it the first thing that you need to know is that we use the WordPress settings API um, and if you're not familiar with it let's uh, load up the codex really quickly uh, the settings API here. If you're not familiar with it, first of all, go read through the codex here. And also, on wp.tootsplus from Envato, there's a really, really great tutorial series by Tom McFarlane um, about how to use the settings API. He did like a six or eight part series that walked through a lot of different examples on how to use it. And it was really, really good. Um, but so this entire system is built through the settings API plus a little bit of custom work. So First of all, we have a very standard admin page um, that we set up just like any other page that has our main HTML for the wrap, our, our nav tabs, uh, and the navigation tabs are these right here. And then inside of our actual options form, we don't have any HTML. All we have are conditional statements that check for which tab is active, and then we display the settings field for that particular tab and then each of the sections for that tab. So this is a field, this is a field, this is also a field. Each one of these are fields. Um, so we display all of the fields and the sections for that particular tab. That's the really simple part. Now inside of our function and inside of our page, our file that registers all of the settings, we get a little bit more advanced. Um, if you've ever seen one of the tutorials that talks about or demonstrates a way to set up your settings or your Metabox options by creating a big giant array, this is going to look pretty similar. So we have, first of all, one array called EDD settings, and this is a multi-dimensional array. Inside of this particular array, are additional arrays for each section. In the plugin, we have general, gateways, emails, styles, and miscellaneous. So each of these is a section. So we have an array, which is also a multidimensional array, of all of the fields for the general, sec general section. And note that it goes through a filter, and this will be very important in a little bit. So we go through and we define each of our fields, the ID of the field, the label for the field, the description for the field, and the type of field it is. So for this first one, for example, let's go back to the general section. We see test mode, that's our label, the checkbox, and then our description. 
And if we inspect the element, we see that the name of the checkbox is test mode. So we do that for each of the fields that we have. And we have checkboxes, select fields, header fields. Um, here's the header field. And the header field looks like this. That's a header field. Uh, we have text fields. We have a gateways field, which is kind of a special field. But anyway, so we go through each of these sections. So we have general here. We have payment gateways here. And each section has its own filter that gets applied emails, styles, and miscellaneous. So each one of those is a big array inside of the main array. We then, uh, this is just to make sure that our options get created, uh, and then what we do is we add a settings section for each field or each section. So we add a section called general. We add a section called gateways, emails, etc. And now we go, we run a for each loop right here called for each settings gateways so for each of this each of the fields or each of the arrays inside of the general or the specific sections so that case a moment ago that was the gateway section so for each one of these we are going to do this add settings field so in the general section we say for each settings general set up the name of the option the ID of the option the option name, the callback function, so this would be EDD type callback, so that might be EDD checkbox callback, EDD select callback, etc. And this is the name of the function that renders this particular settings field. Uh, and then this is the, the setting uh, section and group. And then we have an array of options, and the options are the ID number or the ID, the description, the name, the section, the size, the options, the standard text, etc. So, and these options are all used for rendering various parts of the particular field. So, options, for example, is for rendering all of the options that are in a select dropdown. So, we do add settings field for each section. We see for each gateways, for each emails, for each styles, for each miscellaneous. And then down at the bottom, we register a separate setting for each section, general, gateways, emails, styles, miscellaneous. Now let's scroll down a little bit and let's look at our callbacks. So our callback for the checkbox function, remember we had EDD type callback. So the EDD checkbox callback is very simple. It just sets up a little HTML uh, for a checkbox input field. Make sure that it says EDD settings then the section, and then the ID of the field, which remember, if we look back here, inspect element, we see EDD settings, general test mode. So we have to do the section and the ID to make sure that our fields are displayed, are saved correctly. And so we have all of these different callback functions, which you can use in the add-on plugins and in the core plugin for easily rendering the options. Okay. Then, down at the very, very bottom, we have one more thing that we do. Um, in Throughout the plugin, let's, let's just go to one really quickly. Let's go to our miscellaneous functions file. We have this global EDD options. Now, one thing that I did is I set up each of the sections, general, payment gateways, miscellaneous, etc., as their own individual option inside of WordPress. So if you go to the options.php page, file, you'll see that each of those is recorded as a separate option. Um, and so one of the things that we did is I didn't want to have four global variables for EDD payment gateways, EDD general options, EDD email options, etc. So I combined them all into one global called EDD options. And I did that like this. We retrieve each of the options, payment gateways, or sorry, page settings, which is actually general settings. That's kind of misnamed. Uh, gateway settings, email settings, style settings, miscellaneous settings, and then I did one big array merge right here. So EDD get settings returns all of those options combined, and then this is set to a global variable called EDD options. If we go to the core, the main plugin file, we see global EDD options, and then EDD options equals EDD get settings. 
So that makes all of our settings available throughout the entire plugin. And now let's take a look at how an add-on plugin is going to register their own settings inside of this. So we're going to open up the, um, let's go to the Stripe add-on. So we'll go to the Stripe gateway and here it is. We'll scroll down a little bit. We want to just find one particular function. And here it is. This function right here registers all of the settings for the Stripe payment gateway. And that includes a header field, a live secret key, which is an, uh, it's an API key, a live publishable key, a test secret key, and a test publishable key. And the only thing that we do is set up a multidimensional array where each inner array is a field. And each field has an ID, a name, a description, and a type. And remember, the type is what references the callback function so that we know what this field is going to be rendered as. So we have a header type, we have, and then four text fields as well. We could also have um, checkboxes, select fields, multi-check, -che multi-check, rich editor, uh, and then there are a couple of others as well. So all we do is set up this multidimensional array of settings and then do array merge, settings, stripe settings. And the settings is passed as a parameter to this function. And this settings right here refers to the global, uh, let me find it really quickly, uh, refers to the global EDD options right here. So any option that's in here is going to be passed here. So we simply merge our arrays and suddenly our global EDD options contains all of the custom settings from our Stripe plugin or our authorize.net, or our audio player, or any other plugin that we have. And then the only thing that we have to do here at the bottom is do add filter, EDD settings, and then the section that you want to add the settings to, and your callback function. And that's it. So what we've built here is a really simple way for other developers to add their own options to any of these, payment, any of these tabs inside of Easy Digital Downloads. And I think this was pretty cool. Um, there's definitely some other ways that we could have gone about this. But one thing that I really like is that throughout this entire system, we've utilized the WordPress settings API. So you, not only are we using core methods, but we're also using a couple of custom methods to provide an even easier way for users to add their own settings. If you were to use the WordPress settings API just out of the box as it is, users would be able to add settings where they wanted as well. But it would be slightly more complicated. Using this method, we make it very, very easy to allow other developers to add their own settings while still using the WordPress settings API, which I think is pretty cool. Um, so this has just been kind of an overview. I just wanted to show you this because I think looking at examples like this really show us a variety of ways that we can do things. And overall, uh, I personally have not seen very many plugins or themes or frameworks that I think have a good way of setting up settings. And that's why I built my own here. Um, one of the few that I do actually like is the options framework um, from Devin Price. He did a really, really good job. But, uh, and this is not really a criticism of him, but the one thing that I don't like is the is the custom interface. It's kind of like looking at the options tree. We have that same thing where we have a completely separate interface that's outside of the WordPress UI. Um, and while it looks really nice, my personal opinion is that it, it kind of deters away from WordPress. This system, however, uses all of the WordPress options. There's not a single bit of custom CSS for this entire settings page. And there's very little custom HTML. The only custom HTML we have are for the callback functions. And that's because the WordPress settings API requires that we set those up. So anyway, this is just kind of an overview. Kind of wanted to show it to you. If you have any thoughts, questions, concerns, if you really don't like it, or you really like it, let me know. I'd love to hear your feedback. Thanks for watching.